I stated where, where the information that we had that, to give you a proper context again, I had a protected party who was there, who the uh, protective order had been served. There was an allegation that this, uh, the, this, uh, the suspect had arrived there, which alarmed the victim of the protected party, called 911. And the vehicle moves away in a, a residential area at a very high rate of speed. Uh, it is driving through the neighborhood erratically, comes back. At that point, she's, her attention is drawn again. And as she's sort of going to it, a neighbor is coming up to sort of uh, confront the driver. And that's when the neighbor yells out, uh, uh, get back in the house, he's got a gun. That further alarms, as we did the interview for the victim, she, she, was, she said, I was concerned when I heard the gun but that, that he was coming for me, that uh, he had brought the gun uh, to harm me. So she gets back on 911 call again. Simultaneously, because of the driving, there's uh, dispatch calls that are going out. Now, given the, uh, the gun, she's calling out. Sergeant Ricks and Lopez uh, are responding, and as they respond, and the uh, dispatch is uh, sending folks in, people are trying to figure out, is it an erratic driver, and then the escalation with the gun. As the officers respond back, uh, the officers indicate that as they respond, they hear gunfire actually occurred. They had not heard that. Then, there, then there's a pause and a second round of gunfire that occurs. And at that point is where we uh, uh, ended up at. So based on the totality of the information and the facts presented, we conclude that those facts, together with reasonable inferences about Officer Olzak's apparent decision to use deadly force against Mr. Christensen, would likely find a support that the affirmative legal defense of justification applies to, the, uh, to his use of deadly force and would probably afford Officer Olzak the legal defense of justification. Because we believe a jury would likely find that the facts and reasonable inferences satisfy the elements of the affirmative legal defense of justification and afford Officer Olzak a legal defense to criminal charge, we decline to file criminal charges against Officer Olzak for his, for his use of deadly force in this matter. For similar reasons, based on the same facts as outlined above, we conclude that those facts, together with reasonable inferences about Officer Askerland's apparent decision to use deadly force against Mr. Christensen, would likely support a finding of the uh, the finding that the affirmative defense uh, of justification applies to his use of deadly force and would probably afford Officer Askerland the legal defense of justification. Because we believe a jury would likely find that these, the, uh, the facts and reasonable inferences satisfy the elements of the affirmative legal defense of justification and afford Officer Askerland a legal defense to criminal charge, we decline to file a criminal charge against Officer Askerland for his use of deadly force in this matter. And I should also note that uh, when, uh, when, after the shooting, uh, when the suspect was pulled out, what was ret retrieved from there were two handguns, uh, a knife, and a lighter.